You're writing a postcard to a friend or a note to your boss. Did you know that how you write might say more than what you write? At least according to some handwriting experts. It tells basically how the person thinks, how they feel, how they act. Graphology is pseudoscientific bunkum. Graphologists say that regardless of the language or when it was penned, the writing itself can reveal such personality traits as confidence, shyness, or even a tendency towards rage. And no one believes this more than Sheila Lowe, author of the new book, The Idiot's Guide to Handwriting Analysis. The handwriting actually is not coming specifically from the hand, but it's uh, everything that you've ever experienced in your life is stored in your brain, of course. And so when you go to write, all of those experiences kind of come out on the, the writing trail on the paper. Handwriting is done in three zones, upper, middle, and lower. The upper zone represents intellectual, um, conscious, and uh, mental type of activities. The middle zone is where you live, and it has to do with relationships and thinking. And the lower zone has to do with um, basic drives, food, sex, money, material things. In addition, there is the gestalt of the writing, how it looks as a picture, a snapshot of the personality. A narrow right margin means you're excited about your future. Wide word spacing can indicate social isolation. An extremely wide line spacing is evidence that you have lost the ability to be spontaneous. Along with the Gestalt method, Sheila will measure letters and loops with a caliper and the slant of the writing with what looks like a protractor. Well, let's say somebody's handwriting uh, slants 50 degrees to the right. What, what does that tell you? Well, a uh, moderate right slant would be somebody who experiences things and feels them right away but has some control. The further to right they slant, the more intense the feeling is. An analysis of your writing can be a lot of fun if you're at a book signing, but what if circumstances are different? Now you're at a job interview and graphology is one of the tools used to evaluate you. Is it still fun? You're trying out for a president's role. Carl Miller is CEO of Russell Stevens, an executive recruiting firm in Los Angeles. The average candidate that walks through our doors is degreed and is earning between sixty-five and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Hi, Sheila. Have a seat. Executive recruiting is a high-powered business, and like IBM, Chevron, and others, Carl's firm recruited Sheila Lowe in an effort to keep an edge in the industry. We were interviewing a young lady here at Russell Stevens. She was very polished, well-spoken, refined. We had spent about six hours with her on two different visits and thought, yeah, this is a pretty good person. We think we'll hire her. We did our normal handwriting analysis at that point, and it came up with two points that none of us had seen. One of the points said that she blew up easily. The other said that she had been physically ill, seriously ill, and was recovering from that. Well. We had no knowledge of either of those things, and when I sat to talk with her about her handwriting analysis, as I, as I do everybody, she blew up. One of the first things she did, she just blew up. She went rocket high. We were just amazed. In a subsequent interview, that candidate revealed a recent cancer surgery, seemingly confirming Sheila's analysis. Sheila will study a sample for two or three hours, taking measurements and meticulous notes to get a profile of the writer. It looks very complicated. But is this a science? Graphology is pseudoscientific because it has the trappings of science. But underneath it all, there's no science, which is not a problem if it's being used for fun and for entertainment. But when people aren't getting jobs, when people are being investigated as criminals, because of their writing, because of graphology, that's something that should not happen. Randy Gibson is a police forensic document examiner. He is not a graphologist. His job is to check the validity of written documents by comparing aspects of different samples to see if they were written by the same person. I like to describe the comparison between graphology and forensic document examination as pretty much the same as the comparison between astrology and astronomy. We're looking at the same things, but we use different methods and come up with different results. Uh, one is a science. What I do is a science. It's testable, it's provable, um, it's valid, it's reliable. None of those things apply to graphology. Graphology is a parlor trick. Sheila disagrees. She is very confident in her work and feels that it can and should be used along with other tools in evaluating people. This confidence stems from her success rate. How do you know how well you do it? 
what would you say, like 90% of your clients say, wow, it was amazing, uh, you did a great job? I'd say like 99%. Very few people come back unhappy with the results. And usually the ones who do, I know that they're going to because of what I've seen in their handwriting. What makes Sheila so accurate? My theory is that she is making generalities and subjects interpret the analysis to custom fit themselves. I couldn't resist putting it to the test, so I submitted my writing sample anonymously and Sheila graciously agreed to analyze it. This handwriting has a lot of movement in it, left to right movement, and it shows that he's a man of action. He's, he's very intuitive. Um, hmm, pretty positive stuff. And writing. remember, There's Sheila doesn't realize that she's analyzing my sample. About the, the way you describe this person, who wouldn't want to be described as a man of action and lots of thought and and makes things happen. I mean, any of us would love to hear that. I'm not concerned about what he wants to hear. I'm concerned about what I'm seeing. Maybe everybody would want to be known as a man of action. I don't know that that's true, but what about the point where I said if he doesn't take that energy and channel it into positive outlets, he could get into hot water. Mm. Not everybody would want that. What, is, what does that mean, though? He could get it into means that he could, he could get into trouble because he's, he is a master manipulator. He, he could be a con artist mm. uh, in some circumstances. So oh, it's dear. important. You can, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that you can interpret that in more than one way. This is mine. <laughs> so, so How do uh, I know that, that it's really yours? Uh, well, because I recognize the, hand, the sloppy <laughs> handwriting. Uh, I guess if I was going to be honest with myself, I, I'd have to say, well, who wouldn't want to think that about themselves? And that you're you're just sort of telling me what I want to hear. But I didn't know that was you. But but the other well, stuff, the good communicator. Well, yeah, well, anybody's good at talking to people. No, every, anybody's not. I don't consider myself particularly good at talking to people. Um, no, I, I, that's not true. There are just too many different types of people to say that you could say that about anyone. That's simply not true. But one sample does not make for a fair test. When we return, we'll see how Sheila does when she analyzes.